Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rishengi Lemaloman and this is My Journey to Greatness. My Journey to Greatness is a YouTube series that I started which was meant to inspire and to motivate you guys and to also show you guys some of the things that other people are doing so that you can actually be inspired and actually learn from that. So in today's episode, I have a chemical engineer and an author <laughs> of this book, Attempt and Pray. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk to him today about his journey to greatness, how he, from school to actually writing a book, which is something that I find totally amazing because I know so many people have tried to write books before and some people, I've also tried writing a book before, I think I only did like a page <laughs> and that was it. Um, so, so I think it is a good thing that you actually started it from the beginning to yeah. the end and today we have the final product which was published by a friend of mine so yeah so smanga <laughs> welcome to my journey to greatness thank you thank you for having me i'm really uh yes <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, tell us about yourself, where you come from, your background, and yeah. Alright, uh, my name is uh, Smagaliso Mobo. Mm. I'm from Newcastle. Mm. Yes, from Newcastle. Um, this is just a different places, right? But I'm just going to say I'm from Osiswin, there's a place called Osiswin, that's where I was born. But then I yeah, later went to Emata Deni, that's when my life started there. Yeah. So it's been like that. So I'm going through school. I only went grade one and grade two in Osis Win, mm -hmm. and then I then I went to Matadin where I started my grade three, and then obviously different schools up until mm -hmm. grade twelve. Mm -hmm. So that's that's shut about my life. But obviously, uh, where I went, I was living with my mom's sister, mm -hmm. yeah, and the family. So I just became one of the uh, the, the kids there. Okay, like those were my siblings. Oh, okay, I understand. Um, so you didn't have parents. I do, yeah. but you know, uh, there was a, uh, something that happened when my mom had to go work in Joburg, mm. so they had to find, make a plan for me, Okay. so that was the plan. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. So now you are in this school, you're doing your, your metric high school, did you know what you wanted to study? No, I had no idea what I wanted to study, but obviously when they motivated us, had to be doctors, all of us we didn't even know accounting or stuff like that. We yeah. just had to be doctors. Mm. That was, you know, a great age when we had to write myself. Yes. Always write it. No, I want to be a doctor because I want to cure HIV and yes. cancer, stuff like that. Mm. Then later I went to grade 10. Then I discovered there's something else yeah. that you can be, which is engineering. Okay. I didn't know because I, obviously I know maths, so mm. I was also encouraged by teachers. So you went to a public school? Nope. Yes. Oh, yeah, public school, sorry. I'm missing the private school. <laughs> you were too You were thinking that I was gonna ask if you went to a pub, yeah, private, private school. school. Yeah, okay. It, people are always too big to ask. Yes. <laughs> so it's just like, no, nope, I actually went to a normal public school where we were teaching teachers. <laughs> That's where I went. Yeah. Yeah. So the knowing about engineering. Mm. Yeah, because I obviously I did well in science and maths. So yeah. That was just what was there. Then in grade eleven. My other teacher told us about actuarial mm. science. Mm. Now I got interested because I know how to do math, so I was like, okay, cool, let me do this. Mm. And then later in the year, we found this is where the motivation comes in. There's mm. another guy from the hood mm. who was doing quite well, but he was doing then chemical engineering. Mm. So we were, me and my friend were geared to be like, okay, let's do chemical engineering. This, mm. is, this sounds the best. Then I started to research about it, and I I, I thought I was obviously interested because I thought it was chemistry, but it was not. Mm. But yeah, but it, it's interesting. Oh, chemical engineering, not chemistry. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think so many of us think that. Okay. What is chemical engineering? Chemical engineering, it deals with processes. Okay. It deals with designing processes. Yeah. Stuff like, um, for instance, the piping in the house. Mm. That's just a simple example. Okay. The piping we need to we need to know how much piping you need, and um, the type of fluid you'll be transporting in the pipe. Mm. So now we need to calculate the insulation of the pipe, and then we have to cater for the viscosity of the water or the, any liquid that is passing through there. So that's yeah. what chemical engineering. But it, it it goes into designing stuff like ESCOM 
stuff like yeah. the plant and then the chevron the mm. refinery mm. it designs that so that uh, the processes will happen perfectly mm. so yeah it's, it's stuff like that it's just about design and uh, to actually design in processes to yes. actually take a core substance like and refine it and take it somewhere like uh, with chevron yeah. it's crude oil right so yes. they take crude oil from the sea and then they distillate it, then we have petrol, we have petroleum, we have diesel and stuff like that. So that's chemical engineering. It's a mm. plant designed to actually deal with those type of things. Oh, okay. Um, so you did your chemical engineering, you got into UCT. How is that like for you? Uh, yes, obviously coming to UCT, it's a different story. It's varsity, mm. so it's different jobs together. But then I started with my chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was quite okay. Yeah. Um, obviously there are difficulties there and there. The first difficulty that you meet from a public school is English. Yes. You can't, you can speak, but there's uh, the battery of your English <laughs> <laughs> is not on <laughs> 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 so, so yeah, that's when I had to start then learning English, teaching, teaching myself, obviously. You taught yourself English? Yeah, I could speak, but I couldn't speak like I'm speaking yes, now. So, yeah, 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 How did you myself. do that? Uh, reading books and then uh, mm. when you are watching videos you actually paying attention to what people are saying mm. and then you repeat that that's what i used to do yeah like, I, I used to make myself someone else yeah at the time yeah some people were just prominent at the time like oh dj's boo and other people that were celebrities oh yeah but most of the time i used to spend time using generations and move on mm. you know they write there yes they write so subtitles yes that's when i took off with my love for words and then english, english. Yeah. okay and like how is it like i want to find out from you how is you coming from a public school in newcastle and then now having to study chemical engineering at uct with all the different cultures and races there like how was that yeah it was, obviously it's a it's a, one of the challenging things mm -hmm. seeing that uh, from your own background you don't know how to relate with other cultures mm -hmm. but obviously we, we're here to learn so like much. how did you how did you actually overcome that because for me for example when i came to uct that is one of the things that i struggled with um the language relating to other people yeah. so how did you manage to actually cope with chemical engineering because i feel like chemical engineering is hard it is, <laughs> it is challenging <laughs> okay yes so like how did you manage like i want someone who is sitting at home now thinking of going to uct but they look at their background they're like mm, i may be good at math i may be good at physics yeah. but i don't think this environment is actually some a place where i can thrive at like how did you do how did you manage to try what are some of the things that you did that managed mm. you to that helped you to succeed in that environment ah, okay yeah no i know what it's, mm. it's quite easy. Association. Mm. Association was the best thing for me. Mm. We, I met uh, different people that I didn't know, but we were all Zulus. Mm. So we had only one goal to pass. Mm. And that's what was it. We were always working together, like being together. Like sometimes mm. there's a, you know, there's um, a, um, a, what? Okay. To relate with other people is quite challenging. Mm. So it was easy for us to relate together. Yes, that's true, yes. So when we were always together, then it was easy for someone to point at someone and say, that guy is cool. Then we just maybe relate with that guy. All of us relate with that one guy, just did. and then we ended up having a, like, a lot of friends of different languages mm. together. Mm. Like, then we were just like that. So we knew each other, like, okay, this is how, this is what this guy can do. Mm. I was the funny guy. In the oh, <laughs> I didn't know you were funny. <laughs> Yeah, but I was always funny. So we, we had tossers, we had uh, vendors, we had Toma people within our group. So mm -hmm. like that's how we knew each other. Then yeah. we ended up knowing each other. This guy can do this course, maybe you're good at mess and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's how I actually try. Okay. That's not really something special. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like association. I think that is very important. Most people that I've talked to from UCT, yes. that's what they talk about. Staying with people from a similar background like you and just growing from there. Yes. Yeah, I think that actually helps a lot so i want us to talk about like your writing skills now because like so many times when we hear of a chemical oh an engineer in okay. our minds just switch off and we think this guy is like a genius he's like a geek we don't even think that this person can actually be creative and have other skills as well such as writing yes um how did your writing skills like when did you discover that you could actually write uh it's one of those 
but when you have the potential but obviously you don't know mm -hmm. so you are always gravitating towards something so i always gravitated to people like citing poems mm -hmm. and words obviously like mm -hmm. i told you like mobile and generation that's when i love the words yes so i was always gravitating to words so then I discovered that okay, I can also cite poems. Yeah. Then I started to write my own poems. Yes. Like just putting words together. I didn't know how to rhyme at the time. But obviously, um, then when you're reading poems in school, then you can see like how they write and how the words are rhyming. Mm. Because I was really in love with paper too. Like, you know, like when they, we were doing poems, I was just in love with them and I was always on top of it. Mm. So that's when I loved it. And then I started to write my own poems. But obviously, um, how can I put this? Just not out of the blue. Like right now, I can write poems about anything, interpreting the environment, the situations, and stuff like that. Oh, but nice. At the time, I was dealing with the, the teenage years of love. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I wrote a poem to another girl. Okay. So stuff like that. Then, and then what happened? Like, I want to know that story. So you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to know that story. Because I know I was listening to an interview of Woody. You know, Woody. Is like uh, this uh, vendor artist who went to idols and he was the one who said, My oh, yeah, yeah, I know that guy, yes, yeah. yes. So, actually, like when he wrote that song, he was writing it for this girl, and then now he's like such a big artist. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know that story, okay? So that's fine. Let's leave it there. Yeah, the, the girl obviously did not, um, yeah, it, it did not go well. But the poem was the poem my friend told me and the other people told me that yeah. the girl didn't like it. Uh, girls, man, girls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and then after that, what happened in terms of your writing? Right, so I went to varsity, obviously. Then mm. I, I continued with the, the writing. Yeah. Whenever there's... um. We have to do some renditions with yeah. people when there's someone's birthday. Yeah. I would just do my own thing. Mm -hmm. As it were on this day, the heavens gave away for a child to descend who at once would apprehend all that is called Christ, showing forth this light of the truth of the gospel, which causes all darkness to repel. Started as a boy consumed by zeal, the impetus behind the healing movement. On, the, on those days, I do recall the strange acts and miracles, the manifestations of gold dust as it was never seen before. We saw with our own eyes. What is he up to? about that person yeah I, I i i always write poems not that i can relate with yes and then when you, when i read my poem that i wrote to you you can actually feel it that okay this person writes and the, this person knows me so that's mm. how i relate with people then mm. once i can relate with you i can write a poem about you yeah so yeah that's then i started writing there and then yeah that was just it over and over again i wrote poems i recited poems we made videos and then put them out there and then, mm. yeah so how did now uh, the book come about? Right. So now the book, also something that I also discovered about myself mm. was my spirituality. Okay. You know, when you're always gravitating towards something, that means there's something there. Mm. So with my spirituality, obviously it began as some going to church, like we're all going to church, like it's just normal. Mm. But then I fell in love with how people were preaching. Yeah. with what they were saying mm. so because at the time i could not read i could read but the bible is something else to read yes. at the time when you yes. are young yes so i could relate more with the people that are, are saying something mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this bible and it's about this god mm. so that's when i gravitated towards my spirituality mm. so now growing up and then coming to varsity and then getting exposed to more of christianity and then getting exposed to more of god and then getting born again mm. then falling in love with reading the bible and stuff if you remember it's still words in play yes but all now it's my spirituality and how i want to relate to god which yes. is in there mm. and i said okay i want to do something and that was you wanted to write a book yes i wanted to write a book but i didn't know what i was going to write about at the time mm. so you wanted to write a book um about your spirituality or you wanted to write a book about I, christianity or it's a, uh, I wanted to contribute in okay. the okay. Christian life. Yeah, okay, I get you. Yeah, it's mm. about, yeah, I didn't know what to write about, but I wanted to contribute because I also had a goal. Or I still have it, but I, I, it's one of those things of interpreting the Bible. Okay. I discovered that uh, when people interpret the Bible, they go the other way and leave the other thing. So I want to be one of those who 
help people mm. to interpret the Bible accurately. Okay. So from my lab from there, then mm. this is the beginning of writing a book. Mm. Right. In terms of writing a book, this is where everything turned around. Mm. I got a mentor. Okay. And then he told me that okay, this is I think this is where I should start. Mm. This is this is where I should begin. Okay. So now I want us I want us to talk about that part of you getting a mentor. Uh, because I think that is something that is very important. I, I believe in mentors, but yes. I don't think I have a mentor myself. Um, <laughs> you know what you do, just that you don't see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it's something that is very important. Someone you can actually go to, someone who can that, that you admire, yeah. that you want to remodel some of the things that they do, that you also like uh, believe in. Yes. Like, what yes. was the motivation for you to actually find a mentor, and how did you? Okay, no, I just answer that first. Let's yeah. just take it slow. You you be surprised. Yeah. What led me to actually want a mentor? Mm. At that time, the, and this is the honest truth. Yeah. It was around 2011, 2012. Mm. Everyone else there, we were just going to church and doing our own thing mm. and all of a sudden there was this wind of sure. having mentors okay everyone else wanted to relate with someone like mm. this is my mentor mm. like this is my mentor so everyone there then that how it started mm. and i was just left alone not knowing <laughs> who to search for what what is happening around here yeah. then i just like okay this is my desire father i want to do this i want to make a contribution to Christianity, not yeah. uh, the ordinary way of just teaching and preaching, but mm. I want to do something. So I want you to help me to find a mentor. Mm. And I actually made that prayer. Mm. Then things unfolded from there. Yeah, I know in your, your book you wrote that you wanted someone you could model, someone that you could relate with, someone who yes. lives the life that you actually would like to live yes, as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so then how did you then decide that this is the one for you because there's a lot of people i feel like as young people there's a lot of people who can relate to someone who like yeah i have quite a number of people that i model from a distance like you know what that one i like the way she dresses that one i like the way they talk yes no you know don't. but then how do you finally decide that this is the one for me and like can a person have different mentors as well yes i think you can have different mentors because there's different areas of life mm. it just depends what your mentor covers what they are good at and are they really helping you to get there because the, the role of the mentor is to actually provoke your potential mm. to get where you want to get so mm. they just informing you of the things that they themselves passed through so that okay. you won't pass through those things okay. you just have it easy okay yeah so how did you decide on this right. guy is gonna be my mentor if you read in my book mm. you will say the last statement that i write after talking about the prayer of the mentor mm. i say as you are reading this book, you are seeing the results of the moment. Yes. So the discovery was later. Mm. So you, it like. Oh, okay. Yes. So you can get in a relationship with someone, not mm. a love relationship, but friendship. Mm. Then you just be talking about things and you are learning things and stuff like that. You're just moving with life. Then later you discover that I am someone else. Mm. Then you just pay attention. Oh, wait. It started here. Yes. With this person. Yes, exactly. Okay. It's like your parents. Yeah. Like your, you think your parents are just your parents, but your, your parents are your first mentors. Mm. Because everything that you know, they taught you. Mm. So, stuff like that. Okay. Oh, I get that. Because I have friends. I have, I like, let me just say this. I have friends who I just look at their life and I'm just like, you know what? This is the direction that I'm going yeah. to. So, I guess my friends <laughs> can also. I have my mentors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so I, I want to, to talk about like now that you have a mentor, now that you're learning, I want that that relationship because I would I feel like for someone who would also want to be a like I would like to have a mentor, yes. but how do you navigate a relationship? Is it like you know, like with a romantic relationship, you go to someone, you propose them, and they agree yes. or they decline, and then you get to know each other and whatever happens later. So, with a mentor, is it like how is that relationship like? You know. All right. It, 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 the thing is, it's it's all about principles first. Mm. That's what we have to get. Mm. Obviously, not everyone can be a mentor. Mm. 
That is why when you identify someone as your mentor, you identify them with the things they actually taught you, mm. which is related to principles. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes. Now, when you see your life going somewhere and when you see your life improving somewhere, then that person taught you principles of life because this is how this thing works. This is how growth actually happens. When you become, when you are a child, your parents contribute towards you from the external to the inside. Mm. From the external to the inside, they keep on t- teaching you principles and teaching you things that when you grow up to be an adult, you no longer have to rely on what is from the outside. You have to take from what is inside, then you can live your life. Okay. So that's how the mentor works. They okay. give you principles and teach you those things. Then at the end of the day, you should be able to see your life. Okay. You should be able to live your life actually. That's how you then call your, your, a, a person that you met who has contributed. Your mentor. Yes, there are light mentors, but there are real mentors like Jesus Christ. Mm. Jesus Christ was the mentor of the disciples because mm. you find later in scripture that says these guys did not know anything. Mm. But now they are confident. And then the scripture says, now we know because they were with Jesus. Mm. So you see, they were just ordinary people. But then by the virtue of associating with Jesus, Jesus taught them principles, mm. which then they became apostles later. Okay. If I want you to be a mentor, if Smanga, I like Smanga, I think Smanga stands for the same thing that I would like to stand for. Yes. How do I go about Smanga becoming my mentor? Right. Amiti, you've already identified that you like what I do. Mm. So that is when now my mentorship is based on getting you to the place because you like what I do. So do I have to come and be like, hi Smanga, I like what you do, can you be my mentor? Does it start there or... Yeah, sometimes it starts there, but sometimes it starts from a distance where you just be following someone. Okay. But then you have to then go forward. For okay. the person to actually qualify to be your mentor, you have to go forward. Obviously, people are mentors through books, mm. and then you read their stuff, and then you listen to their whatever Yes, yes, do. yes. But I think, I believe that a, a proper mentorship is, a, is when we have a, a sort of like, not a very close, but a, a relationship, some sort of. Yes, yeah. that, that's what I'd like to think as well. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I consider other things as light, light mentorship, mm. mentorship but there are those like mentorship where you have to be close with the person. Obviously, we can relate and go out and uh, play games and stuff, but what created the relationship? You just liked what I do. You did not like me, mm. you liked what I was doing. Mm. So that's how that's the place of mentorship. That's mm. why you can have many mentors because. If your mentor is spiritual, it's possible that they don't know much about finances. Mm. Yes, they can tell you about finances, but it's possible that they don't know much. But you have to find another one who will oh. help you with finances. Okay, got you, got you. I want to ask about your spirituality. Yes. How did that begin? Right. Okay. Yeah, simple. Like, I will always use the, we always, there are always signs. In everything, there are always signs. You cannot say, I did not know. The only sign. So this is the sign. While obviously I was listening to people preaching, mm. then one day there was one of what I, I don't know how God works these things, but there was that day when my principal was sharing about Moses mm. and his journey with God and how Moses had the words of God. Mm. That took me by storm. Mm. It just took my heart from there. Mm. And from that day, I always had that burning heart, mm. which is still here today. Sure. So I just loved the relationship between God and Moses. Then mm-hmm. my heart went from there. I just wanted that thing. Mm-hmm. Hence, my contribution towards Christianity and my relationship. I always like more than that. I wanted to be like Moses. So, mm-hmm. but it started when I was young. Mm-hmm. And going forward, then I started to get knowledge about Christianity. And then obviously later I got born again. And stuff. Mm-hmm. But it started there. That's where the burning started from when I heard about the story of, of Moses, Moses and God. And like, what does spirituality mean to you? And what role does it play in your life? All right. Um, spirituality is one of those uh, sectors of life, obviously, like finances mm. and relationship. So it's, it, it simply means uh, relating to God. Mm. God is a spirit. So it's relating to God, knowing how to relate to God and uh, to relate to your creator, to put it out there. Mm. Yeah, relating to your creator. Mm. So it is so important because you cannot forget who created you. Mm. That you, you will always go back to that individual who created you to tell you, to give you what you need to be doing or what you need to, how 
you're supposed to behave mm -hmm. and how to fix a certain problem. Mm -hmm. So I think then in a nutshell, that's how that's spirituality. Yes. Not going into details of any other thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and, and and what does it how has it helped you in your life? Like do you have something that you can say this is or I am this person because this is the journey that I have taken or that I've chosen. Mm. Yes, yes, um, like I said, mm. knowing spirituality is knowing your creator and mm. always going back. Mm. Now, this is how this has helped me. Mm. In the world, you come in, and then we hear many opinions. Mm. People will always try to tell you that you this, you are that, and you are that, and you are that. Now, you are left alone. Yes, you will have people that will encourage you, but you are left alone. Mm. But alas, there is a creator who knows you. Mm. That when they affirm you and tell you who you are, mm. that will really, really be something that you must take into consideration. And that, that is the only motivation you actually need. Mm. So in my Christian journey, that's what I've discovered with God. Mm. God will always be telling you what you are. Like you are a king. You are washed by the blood. And the, the, you, are, you are royalty. So mm. that's how you're supposed to see your life. Like mm. you are mine. You belong to me. Mm. You know, stuff like that. I, in, in, in accounts of scripture, you will find that uh, whenever Jesus Christ does something, mm. God will just appear and say, this is my beloved son mm. in whom I'm well pleased. Mm. There was no reason to do that. Not at all. But he did it because his son was in a journey on earth. Mm. So the creator had to affirm his son being on earth facing many challenges. Mm -hmm. So he would affirm to say, this is my beloved son in whom I yeah. am well pleased. Yeah. So that is what spirituality does and what the Bible does. God keeps on affirming you, telling you who you are. By so doing, remember the built-in is inside. Mm -hmm. So when God keeps on affirming you, then you feel this inside, then you are strengthened inside, then to live the life that you're supposed to live from the inside. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I've uh, gained in mm -hmm. my journey of Christianity and spirituality in a sure do you struggle a lot with like identity issues anxiety being scared hey guys thank you so much for watching part one of my journey to greatness with smanga please look out for part two